Hey there, YouTube land, and today we're going to do something a little different. Matthew and Gaston are sitting in the background right there now, and we're going to play the Cubicle Review game. You know, we've never played the Cubicle Review game, and Matthew is not even sure what exactly he's about to do. So let's hope he doesn't ax me at this point to decide to do this. So Matthew, stand up. Yeah! Ha ha! I'm a Jason Voorhees axe. All right. Okay. Go over to the cubicle number one, the top cubicle right there to oh. your left. I yeah. want you to pick, look real quick, pick something out of there that you've seen or that looks really interesting. You're going to come over here and going to give a quick, maybe like 30 second review of that. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, man. Should have warned us before. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Oh, oh, I have seen this. Yes, perfect. I have. <coughs> Number one. Number one, it's the Shredder, everyone's favorite spin-off of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No, actually, it's a weird kind of like snowy snowboarding horror movie that actually the main guy, if I remember correctly, is a guy who voices Aladdin in the uh, movie Aladdin, Disney movie Aladdin. Uh, it was fun and weird. It's nothing special, if I remember correctly. <coughs> it has a really weird ending with like a snowblower or something. Great cover. Great cover. Yeah, it is actually a really nice cover. It's your general slasher pick. Flick, and uh, he finally got the turtles. <laughs> Cass, go up. Stand up. Come over here. Right here. This cubicle. Pick him up. She gets a cubicle with Evil Dead and Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> I don't. Behind the mask. Oh, tick -tock, tick -tock. anything here? <laughs> I don't know. Have you? Just... Have you seen? No. Like that. Hellbound? So. Just pick, pick one though. Uh, Random and you and Matthew can review it together. I'll help you review it. Uh, Did you have to pick it. the one that I hadn't <laughs> seen? <laughs> I don't know what you to see. I said I named five. <laughs> okay, let me see. I, I've seen it's the, the Beast. Planet, planet, planet screen. Planet screen. The Beast Master. The Beast Master. That sounds beast like a good Master like, by, thing. What? Uh, beast Master is by Don Cascarelli who did the Phantasm series. Guys, and Beastmaster is a fun little film with uh, Merrick Singer, uh, and I think Tanya Roberts, if I'm correct, right? Got a really cool cover, I'll say that. It's extremely cool cover. It's all about it a is, beast who's a master. No, it's a bit of a guy <laughs> that can talk to animals, and I kind of control them, so... Uh, it looks very, like, He-Man-esque, actually. It's he's, very, he's got very a very cool. He-Man look to him, he and he's got, like, it's the, the thunder, the cat that he rides, right? Oh, Became, there. like, a 2000s TV series. Did it? Yep. Nice. So, I'm... It's your turn, Dad. Cubicle, Matthew? What? What cubicle? Wait, for you? Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> this one. Like, hey. This one? <coughs> yeah, the second one right there. Oh, okay. Uh, Thought he could mess with me. Shock Treatment. <coughs> one of my favorite uh, <laughs> no-no music of all time. I love Jessica Harper. She was in the movie Phantom of the Paradise. If you've seen Phantom of the Paradise, then you've got to see Shock Treatment. In this one, Sha uh, Jessica Harper and Cliff DeYoung come in and take over the roles of, of Brad and Janet from Rock Your Picture Show. And they're better singers. There. <laughs> Although most people love this movie better, and I can, I can understand why. It's a cult classic. Shock Treatment should be a cult classic in its own right, too. And it is. There's some great catchy songs there. Shock Treatment, the main song, is an amazing song. There's one miss of a song, I'll say that. Yeah, there is. But there's a miss of a song in, in Rock Your Picture Show, too. Also, the dual duet song at the end is extremely well done. Cliff Young plays two roles. He does them extremely well. I've always been a huge fan of Cliff Young. I've been a huge fan of this movie. And I'm a huge fan of the girl that uh, was in the first one doing the tap dancing as well. She's really cute and she plays the nurse in this one. And Matthew, pick the cubicle under. This one? Shot uh, treatment. Really check it out. I will choose, of course, easiest one to review. <coughs> oh. <clears throat> you really? No, I choose this because I've been watching it recently, actually. Okay. Uh, Halloween, uh, the, 25, the <coughs> 25th anniversary edition. Uh, Halloween. I've been watching the other Halloweens recently. This is a good example of how to do a Halloween. Six, seven, eight. The new ones, not good examples of how to do Halloween. Better than Rob Zombie. Oh, God. Better than Rob Zombie. A little bit of a synopsis for this one. Maniac, crazed maniac who was just a normal kid. Killed his sister, confined to an asylum for <coughs> years, has come back, and he's on a rampage chasing after a girl for apparently no reason. He is the shape, and he doesn't need a reason. He's just pretty much the embodiment of evil coming at you and attempting to kill you. 
not a hillbilly, not like from a broken home, freaking love hurts to his mom stripping, just <coughs> good old fashioned suspense and thriller stuff. Cass? <laughs> I'm literally gonna give you an review. You're messing it up yet. Okay, uh. Right. Oh, <coughs> okay. Okay. Look at it. It looks nice, doesn't it? The Prowler. I haven't seen this one in a while. <coughs> uh, good film. The Prowler directed by Joseph Zito and of course uh, with special effects by Tom Savini. It's a classic of early 80s slasher film. Joseph Zito, of course, did one movie. Friday That's the 13th, the one. part four. <coughs> Prowler. It's, uh, if I remember correctly, though, I don't remember very well. It's a fun movie, and it's kind of gruesome in its own regard. And, uh, it's, we've picked a lot of slashers in our own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, guys. Your turn to pick, <coughs> father. <coughs> My turn to pick. Yep. Uh, when does this go? <sighs> and my choice is, guys, keep talking while I pick my, pick my movie. Dibub, <coughs> I'm playing a game because the last video we made made me want to play games. I was just like eating a fudge to coal, playing with my axe. Dad's looking around for a movie to pick up. Come on, this is your collection, Dad. <coughs> Astron 6. Love this. It's a collection of uh, short films done by the Astron 6 crowd that will later go on to do Father's Day and some other fantastic films. Uh, great collection that are some really cool stuff in there. Uh, fake trailers, uh, short films, commentaries, photo gallery, some amazing stuff. Uh, just some incredible stuff. You really got your chance. Two to set. Comes from Troma. Uh, Astron 6. If you don't have it in your collection, shame on you. Get this in your collection. It's really, 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 really freaking good. Yeah, some are hit. Some, some are misses. <coughs> but usually the ones that hit, hit really well. And what they do is they take a pretty, pretty much like usually an 80s theme type thing. Like 80s slasher, 80s horror, beach party movie, stuff like that. And they put a kind of cool twist on them. And uh, that's really neat. So, uh, Matthew, that's yours. <clears throat> that's y'all? Yeah. All righty. Oh, oh, yeah. <clears throat> no way I wasn't going for this one, even though I did just see Black Xmas the other day. <laughs> that was a mistake. That was a mistake watching Black Xmas the other day. Uh, Cold Prey 2. I know what it's print built to. Uh, the stellar sequel to an already stellar slasher movie. And you know what? Nowadays we don't have as many as good slasher movies. There's stuff like Hatchet and this, but other than that, there's been a lot of like misses in recent years. But this one really hits it well. These two movies work just as well. I can compare this actually to a thing I just reviewed. Uh, Halloween. This with the first one is like Halloween 1 and 2. They're placed in the same uh, basic night. Pretty much like really close timelines. Uh... The narrative is continued. You get to learn more about the killer and what makes him tick in the second one, which is the one I'm holding right <coughs> now. And it's just a really good movie. I recommend watching. I recommend watching both. I have not seen the third one. S still, I don't know if I want to because it's hard to live up to the first two. So, third one's a prequel. Is it? Uh, you know, I can see that. But <coughs> Cass, here you go. <clears throat> And with Matthew, uh, I always help you do this one. What's that one? Can I choose? Oh! Bride. <clears throat> Bride of Frankenstein. <clears throat> it's like Frankenstein, only brightier. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the second in the Frankenstein series of movies. It is <clears throat> nice. It comes before Son of Frankenstein. Uh... <laughs> It really? may be the first horse sequel to actually outdo the original film. That's you know? true. <laughs> and narrative the storyline. <clears throat> Better special effect. That's true. Uh, <clears throat> it's about Frank and Stein. It's they about are best friends. Frank Stein Monster, and uh, I just realized how incorrect the naming for that is. The Bride of Frankenstein. Because uh, it's a Frankenstein monster. But, the Bride uh, of Frankenstein's monster. <clears throat> but, Hello. Uh, Really good film. Those yeah, ones are really good. I've always liked the story of Frankenstein. Frankenstein's a Elsa scientist. Elsa Lanchester played the bride. She okay. also plays uh, Mary Shelley in the opening sequence. Really? <coughs> which one's mine, guys? Oh, uh, which one did Katana do? That one. Uh, <coughs> then this one. Oh, the shit. Dracula shelf. Have fun with the Dracula shelf. The Dracula shelf? I will choose... 
Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, but ah, you like that? <clears throat> Kent Branagh gets a bad rap. Does it? Uh, Rob De Niro on this one here. I love that movie. <laughs> plays, you know, plays a really decent role, but Kent Branagh really chews up scenery in a good way. This is the way that Dr. Frankenstein should be played. It hasn't been played since back in the day that Peter Cushing did it. Very fun film. Some great stuff. I love the uh, <coughs> the set pieces on this. He really took it and put it, put it to another level. Some people compare this unfavorably. We have that on laser disc, yeah. yeah. Compare this unfavorably to the movie uh, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. And you know See, what? <clears throat> this is better to me. The difference I like there, part. I feel, <clears throat> is that is the source material. Uh, this is the widescreen. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein itself is a really, really, really good book <laughs> and a really cool idea. But, uh, Man, I'm about to mind. Uh, but, this one? But, uh, Dracula is actually really, it. really boring. Like, really boring. If you've ever actually, like, read the original novel, it is just the worst. I will take this one. Oh. <coughs> you gave me the Mystery Science Theater shelf, so it's hard to review, but everybody knows Mystery Science Theater, but this is, uh, probably little known, I don't know how many people know, but this classic, Santa Claus. A Mexican, San I believe it's Mexican, right? Mexican Santa first. Claus film, like, hit Christmas film, about Santa fighting Satan. And I think he's called Pit or something like that. Yeah, he's called like Pit, but he's like he says to work for the <laughs> devil. Yeah. And uh, he has these horrifying, horrifying animatronic uh, uh, <laughs> reindeer, and he's got like kids from all nations abducted in this one room making different toys, and it's uh, a slave driver. It's really, it's really funny. It's a really, really good one. It's definitely a classic. <clears throat> That's one of my favorites. Hey, Matt, pick me a shelf. Uh, pick you a shelf? Yep. Uh, I will pick you this one. <clears throat> right here, there's got a lot of good choices there. Oh, there are a lot of good choices there. <coughs> almost too many. There is almost too many. What you gonna do, Dad? How's the wax? The Thing? Scarecrow? Or Dark Knight of the Scarecrow? <coughs> uh, of course not, because I called them all. Eden Lake. I mentioned this recently. <clears throat> as the one I think Scream Factory should put out. It's a fantastic movie. Really dark, really hard to watch. Have you seen this one? Yet? I have not actually. We should watch this one. <clears throat> it's got a really. Is that the one with the guy from? Uh... It's Michael Fassbender. Yeah, oh, Michael Fassbender. Movies. Uh, from a bunch of movies. If, if, if you've seen this one, you know what I'm talking about. It's a very dark film. I won the uh, kind of like the killer kid, but done in a very different way, in a very realistic way. At one terrifying night, just incredible stuff. Matthew. Yeah. Which one? One right here. Wait. Which one? Let me see. Pointer. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Let me see. Man, he's big in the film. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, this one's a harder one, actually. Uh, can't say. Uh, okay. What's this one got on it? Give. <laughs> I was like, yeah, four movies! It's nice, it's like none of them I've seen. Give me Jaws. Everybody knows Jaws. Uh, classic movie, the first, the original summer blockbuster. And considering Shark Week was like two weeks ago, or depending upon which Shark Week you saw, this is like, this is the precursor to stuff like Sharknado, but, you know, actually good. And, uh, and like like suspenseful it's hard to make a shark suspenseful but this movie does it oh, nobody like thinks about that <clears throat> it, like if you think about that like sharks the are the shark most ever. like it is it's true but uh but like this is the movie that made sharks scary the guy who wrote the original like jaws book i believe or really it was a book i believe Robert spent years 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 later like the rest of his life trying to tell people that sharks were nice because he felt bad about accidentally causing the death of many <laughs> sharks when sharks don't actually attack people a lot. Interesting little fact. And which one do I do? Uh, ooh. Down there. Oh, I shouldn't have given you these good ones. I see, like, Valentine down there and Dragging Me to Hell. You did see Valentine down there. Thank you for, for pointing it out. I watched that a few years ago. Did you? I did. I've been watching a lot of horror movies recently. Valentine's a favorite of mine. Now, as I find <laughs> out, this is by Jamie Blanks, the guy that did Urban Legend. And uh, awesome. yeah, also did the movie uh, Storm Warnings. Uh, it's this is a really incredible film. Great cast. It's kind of like around this time there's all these self-referential horror movies that were coming to like Scream and I know what they did last summer and stuff like that. David Boreanaz is in it. And uh, when people saw Valentine, which was actual real throwback to an actual 
80s style slasher film and it's done like an 80s style slasher film, people weren't quite ready for it. They didn't know what to expect and they expected more of pretty much the scream stuff like that. And <clears throat> because of that, this movie didn't do well. And it's a shame because this movie was pretty damn freaking good. It was. It was and really if you like slasher films, if you knew slasher films, you liked this movie. And because you knew exactly what you were getting, you knew the source material, you knew the slasher films came before it. So you knew what a slasher film was, you knew how what the 80s style was, and you appreciated it for what it was. <clears throat> if you came out of this one scratching your head or saying, what the hell? You're, you're, one, you're the Scream generation, and that's probably what you've been watching. Not that that's a bad thing, but uh, watch some of the older stuff. This movie actually rocks. Oh, it's really, really good. Far the shelf over. Far the shelf <clears throat> over? Top one? Yeah. Oh, your Blu-rays. Goody. Goody. Ooh. No, 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 no. Not that one. Ooh, maybe that it's one. It's taking him a while. <clears throat> it's, I like the choices. That's the thing. And I like to do ones that I can talk a bit about. I don't want to... <sighs> We've been no doing point. horror. I was. I thought about doing Kick Ass because uh, I'm the comic guy and I actually don't like Kick Ass very much. But uh, Night Train to Terror, Night Train to Terror. We've actually done a review of this before. Uh, it's a funny movie. It's it's not the best, but it's fun to watch. Come on, dance with me. Dance with me. Everybody's got something to do. Everybody but you. You should have seen that movie and know what's happening. Yeah, it's it's really fun. It's <laughs> hilarious. Uh, the entire premise is, if you've ever heard the song, Spanish Train, pretty much that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, little quick thing. I actually really like the, uh, the story Greta. I don't know why. Especially, not the story Greta the as much movie. as the movie Greta. Yeah. The movie Greta is actually really well done. But in the, like, the weirdest, like, it makes no sense. But it's just fun to watch, because the girl who plays Greta... It's just so bubbly and crazy. It's just fun. I like this so much that when my uh, friend Faligar, 517, Sammy on here, had his birthday, that was one of the, the uh, Blu-rays that I actually got him from Barnes & Noble for his birthday. It's really, really good. Uh, down there, Dad. Right down there. Here? Yeah. What do you think? Extremely underrated in the state. Psycho 4 was actually a cable... <laughs> A cable film, and you know what? It's a really good one. It's the beginning, and it kind of is a precursor to the actual basement <coughs> series that you see right now. Uh, coming out soon is is another package like this. Except it's going to be four movies, and the fourth movie is the reason I'm getting it. It's going to be the 1990s Bud Court basement tale series, which we'll talk about when, when I get it. But this cycle forward here, basically, Roman uh, Roman Roman Bates. <laughs> Roman <laughs> Bates. Norman Bates is now uh, pretty much cured. He's married. He, but the problem is that a lot of studies have said that uh, have said that basically he's worried that he could pass on the murderous gene if he ever had children. And he just found out that his wife is pregnant and his wife's a nurse. He met her when he was in the hospital. He's had a fantastic life. His life's going good. But his wife's pregnant. He's worried that he's going to carry, carry on the murderous gene to his son and is planning to kill his wife. He talks to a nurse on a call-in radio show and, uh, and, and tells her basically the whole story of, of his life. We get to see... Uh, Norman Bates as a child and his mom and see how we how it progressed uh, kind of like you're seeing the Bates uh, series in the series now Bates Motel and uh, basically it, Norman Bates gets happy ending it's a really good movie Psycho 4 the beginning if you haven't seen it I strongly recommend it it's on the triple feature Psycho 2, 3 and 4 I also grabbed the Psycho 2 and Psycho 3 editions that came up by Scream Factory they're awesome I love to see Psycho 4 done but Cliff, Mc, Cliff unfortunately from Scream Factory said he didn't want to do Psycho 4 talk to him about that because I know if you guys got Psycho 2 and 3, you, you might want to do that. Why didn't want to do Psycho 4? Because he said it was TV. <coughs> oh, okay, I can kind of get that. And yet he's doing Hemlock Grove. Oh, okay, never mind. No, like, backing for that one anymore. This has been our cubicle challenge. <laughs> and it's been fun, it's been neat, it's been something different, and we let Very Cass good. get off on it a bit because, well, <laughs> she was, get off of it from it because she was kind of doing her whole video gaming. Say hi, Cass. Hey. <laughs> <clears throat> but, uh, I would love to see other people try this. We're basically just randomly take some stuff and uh, get get somebody on here with you if you if you can, or just do it yourself and just go to a shelf, grab something, take it out, come do a review, go back, do do it for two or three. TJ, you, Tina, be awesome or something like this. Faligar, anybody that would like to do something like this, we'd really love to see it. It's uh, cool, it's fun, and it's really fast, and you don't have to make it twenty minutes like we did. You can make like a four or five minute one, just do a couple. I could have went on for an hour. We always go on for an hour. <laughs> we can. Thanks for watching, guys. So we're gonna go right now because it's. Uh, I got. Almost... I just made some tea, and it's time for tea. And tea time also means something else on Saturday nights, doesn't it? That's right. It's coming on surprisingly late tonight. 
is everyone's favorite. Yeah, we're getting like an hour away. Uh, we're Doctor Who approaching Doctor Who. And right. if maybe afterwards, if we feel inspired, we'll come make a video review about it. Yeah, yeah, especially considering uh, it's Capaldi, Capaldi's second episode, and it's going to be his first <laughs> real episode in the meat of the Doctor because he was like doing the whole every Doctor is regenerative, like crazy time. And Dalek. That's nice episode. And yeah, what a better way to like throw him into the mix and throw him against the villain. The classic. So me right now, it is time for tea. Yes, and watch out for Shredder.